So one of the most confusing things when you first start getting into the AI space is trying to get a hold and understand what is an AI agent and what is it not. And many AI agent content creators like myself don't make it easy for you because you're often, you know, shocked and awed with images like this, these gigantic AI agents with a million different workflows, half of which are referred to as an AI agent half the time, even though they aren't really an AI agent, but they're an automation. But what's the difference? Why does it matter? Super, super confusing for anyone who's brand new. And what I wish is someone had sat me down and kind of broken it down component by component and explained to me what an AI agent is, what it does, what makes up an AI agent and how it differs from everything else. And so in this video, that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to take you through what I call the five pillars of AI agents, breaking it down as simply as possible, assuming you're not technical, you're not a developer, you've never done any of this before, but you want to understand why it all works. And we'll also go into what the difference is between an AI agent and an AI automation. So by the end of this, you'll just be only slightly confused when people bring it up. For my demonstration, I'm going to be inside of N8N. This is a no code, low code platform that allows you to build AI agents, AI workflows without actually having code and gives you nice visuals. So it's perfect for our demonstration here today. And so what you're looking at here is the five pillars of AI agents, essentially an AI agent that has been deconstructed on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side is essentially that same AI agent, but put together. So this way, as we go through it, I'm going to show you what each part does kind of in a vacuum. And then we'll also be able to reference it and see what it looks like as part of a whole. So first things first, what is an AI agent? Well, there's no official definition anywhere. There's no AI agent police that are gonna come and arrest you if you call an automation an agent, although some comment sections will make you think otherwise. But a great article on what is an AI agent came out at the end of last year by Anthropic. Now, Anthropic is the makers of Claude, and they have a really good definition for what agents are. And so how they define it is agents are systems where large language models dynamically direct their own processes and tool usages, maintaining control over how they accomplish tasks. Now, what does that mean? That means AI agents are dynamic and that they have multiple tools at their disposal that they can use to complete a task. And so that tool usage setup is something we see over here on the right with our AI agent, right? You see all these tools here in the bottom in the green. These are all the things that our AI agent can do, and we could have as many tools attached to that as we want, right? Think of ChatGPT, but with the ability to do things on your behalf, send emails, do internet research, right? Send notifications like Slack. Anything like you think a human could do on the internet, there's probably a tool associated with it that you can hook up to an AI agent. And the agent's ability to have multiple tools at its disposal and pick the correct one for the job it's given, that's what makes an AI agent an AI agent versus an automation, which is much more linear, right? It's always gonna do the same thing every time, right? Imagine if I had an automation where I drop a file inside of Google Drive, which then triggers a Slack message being sent in a group, right? That's an automation. We could even throw AI in that and have some large language model complete the message and say, hey, this is what got put in the uh, Google Drive. Here's who should know about it. It's still, it's a linear thing. It always does the same thing every single time it's triggered. Agents are dynamic. So hopefully that kind of explains what the AI agent is. And again, great article by Anthropic called Building Effective AI Agents. Highly suggest you check it out. But let's dive a little bit further into each part because I think you can break down AI agents into five main components. And those components are as follows. You have the brain of the AI agent. You have memory, tools, inputs, and outputs. Now, I probably could have done a better job color coding this, so it kind of corresponds, but let's first talk about the brain over here on the left. This is this brain, this is associated with an AI model. So we see that over here, DeepSeek, OpenAI, Claude. When you think of ChatGPT, you think of large language models, there's a model under the hood, right? ChatGPT has 4.1, 01, 03, right? That is the actual large language model, and that's what acts as the brain, right? It's what decides, hey, I'm going to use tool A, I'm going to use tool B, and then gives you a response. That's the brain, right? And it's arguably the most important piece. And these brains come in different levels, right? You can have a like a dumber brain that takes up less compute power, like a 4.1 mini, right? Or nano, or we can have really, really powerful ones like Sonnet or Opus 4. And again, over here on the right, you kind of see that in action. You can see the tools connected with the brain. Now, next we have memory. Right. In this case, we see simple memory, 
and we see Postgres chat memory. Now, simple memory is essentially something that just kind of like lives on your browser almost, but memory is what allows the AI agent to kind of remember your past few conversations, right? Something that chat GPT has, right? It can remember your conversations, sometimes a whole lot of them. And most AI agents need some form of memory to actually be useful. And again, that can be rather simple or it can be a full blown database like with Postgres, right? Something that's stored everywhere, remembers all of your conversation, has metadata associated with it, right? So there's definitely levels to memory, just like there's levels to a large language model, but that's the second piece. And on the right-hand side, we see that right here. Next, we have the tools. And like I talked about before, right? We see them here in the blue and down here on the right in the green, right? Tools are what lets our AI agent do things, right? We see here, we see Notion, we see Gmail, we see this Think tool. We also see over here what's called the calendar tool and the email tool, right? And like, what are these? Well, you can have your AI agent have sub AI agents, right? Your sub AI agent could be a tool. That sub AI agent could also have another AI agent as a tool. You can have AI agents all the way down the stack, each of them acting as tools. So just think of tools as things that they are able to do. And the nice thing when using a program like N8N, right, I'm able to just click in here and you can kind of see here on the right, all these built-in tools. Now, tools are usually associated with what is known as like an API, um, an application programming interface. And an API, if you ever hear it, it's just like one program talking to another and it's the language they use to speak to one another. So they know, hey, I need this data when you talk to me and I need this data back. API, two programs talking to one another. Next, we have our inputs, and that can be a number of things. That's just what you use to talk to it, right? Again, ChatGPT, what is it? It's chat, right? It's just a chat interface. Or it could also be a trigger. You can have an AI agent you never actually speak to. It just does things when other things happen somewhere, right? Like we have a Gmail trigger. If I get a specific email in my inbox that shows up, I want this agent to, depending on what's in the email, do task A, B, C, or D, respond to it, draft up a response, notify me whatever. It could be a trigger. It can be chat. And here we actually have voice as well. So the ability to actually talk to it could be another input. That's just how you speak with your agent, right? So we've gone over brain, memory, tools, inputs. Lastly, outputs. What's the final product? How does it talk to you? Again, to bring up chat GPT, the final product is just a text, right? Sometimes it's code, but just like inputs can be super varied, so can outputs, right? In this case, this responds to you with a webhook, which corresponds to the voice one. So this AI agent over here on the right actually uses voice to talk to you and talk back. But again, it could be a Slack message. It could be the creation of an email. It could be a PDF. It could be something inside of Excel. Whatever you want, there needs to be some sort of final output though. And so those five pillars become this, like we've been talking about, right? Brain, memory, tools, inputs, outputs. And the final thing I would talk about AI agents and going a little bit deeper is what is known as the system message. And that's what you see here, all of this text. Now, what is the system message? And system messages are similar to prompts, right? I talk to ChatGPT, I give it a prompt. That is called the user message, right? That's what the user is asking it to do. But every single AI system usually, well, most of them have what is called a system message. And that's essentially a set of instructions under the hood that define its logic that say, hey, this is how I want you to act. These are the tools you have available to you. This is how I want you to logically flow through something, right? You know, when chat GPT was being like super sycophantic with people, right? Not so long ago, that probably had something to do with the internal system message of it. And so system messages are very, very important because as intelligent as these systems are, they're also kind of really stupid to a certain extent, right? I like to refer to them as like genius interns. And these system messages essentially give them blinders that allow them to focus and do what you need them to do. And so that's kind of like the sixth pillar, I would say. So that was just a really quick video on this. I hope it kind of made AI agents make a little more sense to you and how they compare with automations, right? The biggest thing is they have tools and they can choose to use them depending on the task, right? They're dynamic. It's not always doing the same thing every single time. And they're, you know, kind of broken up into these big parts. So again, hope that helped you out. I know it was super confusing when I started. I wish this is how someone explained it to me. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments.